Hey, good morning, everyone. Are we good? You guys good? Get started. Thanks for coming out um, in a somewhat chilly weather. Uh, hopefully this rain doesn't impede on our briefing today. I, I don't think it will. Looks like we got a window here. Uh, but welcome to our advanced lear learning library. Uh, behind me is one of the new keepers. Uh, we have 100 or keep 150 statues that you will find throughout our city. The 13 statues were installed thanks to Together Wichita, and they were in the work of our local artists and our art community. Uh, they were commissioned to celebrate Wichita's 150 year excuse me, birthday. Uh, in light of the COVID uh, situation, our celebration plans for the year had to be canceled, but in one small way, we can recognize Wichita's 150th year milestone for our community uh, through these statues. The keeper here was designed uh, by Ms. Chipoli, uh, who, who came in and talked about the design and we uh, had a little bit of a brainstorming and then she uh, created this beautiful statue behind us. Uh, and each district, uh, out of our six uh, districts throughout Wichita, each district gets two. And that they reflect, it was, uh, uh, ensure that they reflect the parks in which they were placed. As all of the keepers except for one on West Douglas are currently installed and they are available uh, for public viewing and to be visited. And we have some of our local artists here with us today to talk about their work and experience uh, with the project. So first I'm going to uh, just bring up uh, uh, Ms. Ch uh, Chipoli, who is the artist uh, for this one, to come say a few words. And you don't have to say these, you can say your own words. <laughs> Hi. Um I just wanted to thank Together Wichita for all the hard work they've done organizing this project. Um, thank you to Tessa for her work organizing all the artists and working directly with them. Um, and thank you to the Bozen Foundation for allowing us to use Black Bear Bozen's iconic Keeper of the Plains statue um, as inspiration for even more public art. Um, these statues are something I really believe helps our community stay in touch with our history. Um, they give artists a chance to make their mark and get their work out there, uh, make their mark on the city, and um, I think will just serve as inspiration for even more public art in years to come. Um, thank you, Mayor Brandon Whipple, for speaking on this today and letting the public know about this wonderful project. Um, thank you for your help and inspiration designing this statue behind us. Um, it was uh, something I was really happy to be a part of. Um, this project, I think, has really helped myself personally as an artist grow, and I couldn't be more grateful for the opportunity. So thank you for having me. Yeah, let's go ahead and hear from some of the other artists as well um, coming up and, and please uh, come tell us about your uh, statue and your work. The masks are fun. My name is Heather Byers. Um, I'm another one of the artists that was chosen for the Keeper 150 project. My statue is at Osage Park down near 31st and Seneca. Um, I had a really great time with this project. I got to go and meet with residents in the area and really talk to them about what um, what their their uh, vision for the statue was and what's important to them as a community. Um, while uh, Excuse me. So they had um, a lot of things that they had in mind for, for what's important to them. One thing was family, um, and then a lot of people in South Wichita are transportation workers. So those are kind of some of the themes that, that I worked with um, in creating my statue. I went, wanted it to be really bright and colorful. Um, Osage Park has the splash pad, which again, unfortunately, because of coronavirus, is not open this year. But I hope that it's something that will be um, enjoyed for many many years to come. Um, I want to echo what Michelle has said, just thanks to everybody. Um, this project took a lot of coordinating um, between so many artists and deliveries and um, with the Black Bear Bozen Committee trying to approve designs and everything else. Um, it was a lot of hard work from a lot of people and I'm just really happy to have been a part of it. Is Ella Monique here? Oh, excellent. Well, we also have another, uh, another artist as well. Uh, but Elmore Inc. and then we'll get to the uh, next artist. My name is Ella Monique Backus and I created the Keeper at Fairmount Park. 
And so the keeper has 150 international flags representing Wichita as an international city. A hundred of those flags are represent the countries of origin of WSU students. And then it also has um, lots of iris on, uh, flowers on the front and at the heart at a red iris. And the red iris um, uh, refers to Hugo Wall, who was a hybridist, who was a professor at WSU for a long time. And a lot of the iris all around Fairmount community um, are because of him. The red iris doesn't occur naturally. It's something that you have to cultivate. And it, it's something rare and beautiful. And that reflects the beautiful combination of people in that community. I'm also the executive director of Arts Partners. And so Arts Partners was selected to create a keeper for Plainview Park. The artist was Teresa Zardoz. And she uh, was inspired by uh, people from the Neighborhood Association, as well as artists from Jardine Middle School. And uh, it represents, um, has Rosie the Riv Riveter on the, the keeper. It has uh, references to Joyland and the aviation history and the, um, the housing there in Plainview. So um, those are the opportunities that I had. And I was so grateful. And I enjoyed working with people from the Neighborhood Association to hear what was important to them. And I appreciate the opportunity to do this project. Of course, we have another artist as well who would come up and speak. Hi, I'm Angie Prather and I represent Together Wichita. Tessa Brungart, who coordinated this project, couldn't be with us today. So I just wanted to thank the City Council, the Mayor, uh, the Park Board, everyone who was involved in the project, the many artists who contributed their talents, um, and also to remind people to, to, who, that there is an easy way for them to see each of the sculptures. Uh, we've pl placed a digital map on something called an Easy Travel app. It's izi.travel. It's free to download. And once you download that, you'll be able to see where each of the keepers are located. Uh, there's an artist bio in, on, for each of the projects, uh, photographs by Jamie Green from the Wichita Eagle of each of the projects, um, and then a little bit about the inspiration that each artist embraced for their project. So it's a great and easy, free way to get a closer look at the keepers, and we encourage everyone to take a look at that. Thank you. All right, you can find more information about our about the locations of the keepers and about the artists uh, who created them, uh, at in a including a full documentary about the project on TogetherWichita.com. The Mayor's Keeper is in a gets a place of significance uh, here at the Advanced Learning Library, where visitors will be able to see it when they come to check out books, uh, participate in programs, or even just grab a coffee. Uh, here to tell us a little more about the Advanced Learning Library and some of the resources that uh, it has uh, for our community is Mr. Sean Jones. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, so while we're on the subject of parks, uh, we want to thank Park and Recreation for providing four picnic tables um, and umbrellas that are currently in use on the south lawn of the Advanced Learning Library behind us. Uh, their generosity helped us reopen our beloved Reverie Coffee Roasters at the library last week. Because the library requires masks inside the building, visitors to the library who want to sit and enjoy their coffee can utilize these tables or the reading terrace on the second floor where they can safely remove their masks. So if you're in need of a mid-morning pick-me-up, make sure you swing by the cafe and get a pumpkin spice latte. September is Library Card Sign-Up Month, a national initiative by the American Library Association to encourage use of public libraries across the country by signing up for a library card. Now more than ever, it is important for students, educators, and parents to come in and sign up for a free library card. Not only can cardholders access the library's collection of books, movies, audiobooks, and CDs, they will also have access to ebooks and e audiobooks on Libby, digital magazines on Flipster, and dozens of databases for research and information sharing on the library's website. Visit wichitalibrary.org to learn more about library cards and visit any of our seven locations to sign up. And last, the library will begin virtual programming this month. All virtual programs will be held on Zoom and will require registration. 
An, e an email will be sent to all participants the day before and the day of the program with a link to the Zoom program and call-in information. Visit wichitalibrary.org slash events to view the programs and to register. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. And just want to acknowledge uh, the great work that our public library is doing, particularly in adapting to our uh, current situation with COVID. I know there's a lot of parents who are in a similar situation that myself and Chelsea are in uh, with our kids now learning remotely from home and having the ability to integrate uh, their uh, learning materials with materials from the library through the drive through here or directly on the website is, is just a great uh, opportunity for our community that many other uh, communities uh, might not have. So just another reason why Wichita is doing things great and it's because of people like Sean uh, who, who are innovative in thinking how we can del deliver these services uh, in a safe way. So with that, I want to congratulate uh, Wichita State University and uh, 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 Deloitte today as they announced a UK-based UK uh, Deloitte plans to build a smart factory here in Wichita and will focus on automation and machine learning. Uh, it also further strengthens our place uh, in the advanced manufacturing industry and positions us to further diversify our manufacturing base. Uh, so with that, Ms. Franklin is here from Wichita State. Uh, so Ms. Franklin, would you like to come up and say a few words about this project? Thank you, Mayor, appreciate that. Um, Good morning, my name is Debbie Franklin and I am here on behalf of Wichita State University's president, uh, Dr. Jay Golden, to um, announce that a partnership has been um, established with Deloitte and to create um, and launch a new smart factory at Wichita initiative. Um, this particular um, facility is under construction and the opening of that will take place in the spring, spring of 2021. And this is an ex immersive experiential learning environment that will accelerate the future of manufacturing as innovation and new technologies continue to reshape operations in modern enterprises. It will take emerging technologies and new technologies to the market, help to integrate those and keep Kansas and U.S. companies efficient and effective in global markets. And these technologies help them to increase productivity um, and reduce costs and ensure um, sustainability of their manufacturing and business operations going forward. It's a very exciting partnership. We're honored to work closely and partner with Deloitte on their um, on this particular initiative and um, we will use the Wichita's cutting edge hub for precision manufacturing and technology linking it with the unique experience that captures innovation value proposition and destru disruptive technology capabilities to create the smart factory again we're very honored to have this collaboration and look forward to sharing the smart factory at Wichita with the Wichita community. We thank the city and the business and industry in our area for their collaboration on this initiative. Thank you. All right, with that, we're open up to questions. If you got anything on anyone's mind, go for it. Take on the county, what did the county do? They didn't, vote to accept, uh, they didn't vote to accept their medical officer's yeah. proposed policy to help us through this medical crisis. Um, really, our friends in the county are elected, and they, uh, I guess, uh, make decisions based on what they feel is best for the county. Uh, at the city level, uh, where I work, uh, you know, we've done everything we can uh, to ensure that the public safety of our community is paramount. And um, in doing so, I'm happy to say that we were able to extend the mask order as uh, we have noticed it is the number one tool that is responsible for lowering our COVID numbers uh, over 
the last few weeks. Uh, we want Wichita's economy to open back up. We want our kids back in the classroom. We want people to feel confident when they get out there shopping. And to do that, we got to attack COVID head on as a community and acknowledge that's a threat. And by that, we can defeat it like we do any other threat as a community, which is why uh, you know the city of Wichita will do our part uh, to ensure that people stay safe. Other comments? Oh, is Scott supposed to be up here? Uh, Scott, you get, come on up here, Scott. <laughs> I guess the question I would have, what does this mean for the Great Wichita area, with this new smart factory? Would that be bringing companies in from across the world to learn about their capabilities and then exposing them to the great opportunities here in Wichita? Yeah, so one of the things that Wichita brings to the table that other communities don't uh, is not only are we the manufacturing capital of the world as far as advanced products go, but also uh, our universities are uh, forward thinking enough that they integrate this real world um, this real world experience with the, the academic, within the academic environment. Uh, so this is just another opportunity for um, the continuation of applied learning uh, with traditional learning uh, for a, a, a job outcome that not only helps the company, but also builds up our, our, uh, our pool of trained workers, which attracts more uh, talent here to Wichita. So it's part of our economic strategy going forward. Uh, Wichita is not on the sidelines when it comes to growth at, at, during this time. I think a lot of folks interpret the COVID crisis as we're, we're almost all on the sidelines waiting for it to go away. Uh, the advancements we're seeing at Wichita State, the partnerships we're seeing with other uh, companies, uh, what we saw over a spirit a couple uh, last week where uh, in a blink of an eye, uh, Wichita became the advanced uh, um, ventilator manufacturer of the world, uh, taking 25 units a week to 500 a day, once our people got their hands on that, um, shows that uh, we are open for business, we're ready to grow our economy, and the news today and the work at Wichita State, Wichita State does amazing, uh, amazing job bringing companies here, but also uh, planting those seeds for the future by also uh, not only having those jobs here, but training the next generation uh, in those jobs. So when they get out there, they have an edge uh, with the traditional training and with uh, that hands-on training. Other questions? And I think Scott, there's probably a big section I missed in there. That's why you're asking the question. The, uh, That it. Guys, thank you all for being here. As always, thank you for bearing the cold. Sean, thanks for all the work you do, for your single-handedly upholding the library and making sure everything's great. Um, just do want to highlight again, we have a drive-through here at the library to get uh, items uh, while still being socially distanced. Uh, so please take advantage of it. Thank you.